So I think the best use of our remaining two minutes is probably to highlight some things about wave interference that, um, that we are not talking about this semester. But uh, those of you who might be going on to, um, I guess, physics 4C, or you know, if you are taking any optics lab, this is the kind of interference that you will see. So let me go to bed.colorado.edu. And oh, and I have a demo that uses water waves. Um, I think the available videos for that is <laughs> under my physics of 4C because that's the class where we talk about it. But we have a simulation version of it. So when you look at something like, I wonder if it'll be under sounds and waves. Oh, okay, yeah, there it is. Um, so this wave interference demo, it should show up under a bunch of different things. So it obviously shows under sounds and waves and it might show up under, um, light and radiation yeah it shows up under <laughs> light and radiation and i wonder if it turns turns up under quantum phenomena okay it doesn't turn uh, not quantum phenomena that's fine i mean it could have been there but i guess uh, so th there is a simulation that looks very similar to this that is under quantum phenomena it just isn't html5 yet i think there's a uh, um yeah, there's the quantum wave interference. And when you look at the details of this simulation and compare it to the, so let me open this up somewhere and compare it to the details of uh, uh, this simulation. Let me turn back on the HTML5. So compare the details of this simulation, they are quite similar. It's, and it's because they are basically the same um, Phenomena, and well, not the same phenomena. The phenomenon of interference is mathematically very similar between these water waves um, and the the quantum mechanical waves. <laughs> so, um, so you know, this is the the illustration. Let's see. Oh, I guess I need to turn this on. Yeah. So you can imagine a sort of a, a water waves. I think can I do? Oh, that's the just. I guess I only have a top view. Uh, that's fine. So um, the striking phenomenon of interference that that gets more attention when we do optics is uh, this uh, kind of two source interference. I think I can, can I add a source? Oh, I guess this is the side of it. Um, and yeah, this is uh, illustrating in the water. You can also do it with the sound waves. Um, so with the sound waves, this would be like a pressure, a high pressure, low pressure. So yeah, why is a high pressure, I think. And you can also talk about light waves um, with the electromagnetic waves. Um, I guess it's in this interference. So let me stick to water waves just to highlight the generality of these two, uh, these phenomena, the underlying physical picture almost doesn't matter for the discussion of wave interference. What matters is that these are linear phenomena, so they obey superposition principle. Under that, you see this uh, striking interference phenomena. There's a kind of a line of a, a point where um, there is no disturbance. So um, as these water droplets are dropping as um, regular frequency, the water surface is um, oscillating, you know, high, low, and so on. There's a kind of middle point. And there's a set of points here where they remain at middle level. And I guess if we visualize it with, uh, I think, uh, light waves, that's the cleanest uh, uh, way to visualize it. So you can see these uh, lines of places where there's no uh, light wave. That's where something called the destructive interference is happening. And for the phenomena we are looking at, the phenomena of a standing wave, we do talk about um, nodes as forming where destructive interference occurs. And um, because this isn't a standing wave, we don't call these nodes, but the basic interference phenomena that's happening, destructive interference, that's the same. Phenomena. Okay, I've said phenomenon enough. 
Um, and so this is an illustration with just these classical waves, uh, water waves, sound waves, uh, sound waves, or um, or the uh, <laughs> I don't know what with sound waves or the light waves. It's um, um, and when we talk about quantum wave, uh, so I guess uh, so. This has a couple different versions. There's a version with uh, electron waves, which would be uh, for which there would be no other way to describe than okay, that's a quantum mechanical wave that we talk about more in physics 4C. And um, and there is, uh, I think it lets me use uh, photons. Oh, oh, actually the default is photons. So with the photons, this is basically light waves that we were seeing before. So when I, let's see. What do I need to do? Double solid. Um, two lasers, maybe. Yeah, I think this is, um, I think if I do high intensity, uh, yeah, there's a barrier, yeah, potential barrier. Screen, um, I had a barrier. Oh, wait, wait, no, that's not what I want. I wanted the double solid, yeah. So, um, so this slit behaves as, uh, so these slits behave like those one of those two sources. So uh, so there's an interference happening here, and when you are dealing with the photons, then that's the light wave. Um, I guess so. We are not talking about light waves in this class, so we. Are, but uh, yeah, it, the way we treat light wave light waves as waves is basically the same way we've been treating waves on a string and sound waves. Um, now, what's the interesting thing that we look at in uh, physics 4C is when these are not photons, but particles like electrons and neutrons. Uh, even with those, we see interference phenomena. And uh, so that's the topic of physics 4C, so I won't talk about that more. But I think somewhere in the lecture videos, you hear me say that um, of all the topics we covered this semester, one topic that you will see in every single lower division engineering physics class is waves. Um, and in physics 4B, it kind of depends. <laughs> it depends on if <laughs> whoever's teaching the course gets to the electromagnetic wave at the end. Uh, assuming they do, then in physics 4C is where you see optics and you deal with the quantum mechanics and waves are really general and there are a lot of applications. So.